Dear respected brothers and sisters, young and elders, continuing the beautiful stories of the greatest men who walk this earth, Qasasul Anbiya, the stories of the prophets, and tonight, inshallah, we are going to talk about the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. Imam Bukhari narrated through Hadrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam was asked by the Sahaba, Man akramun nasi ya Rasulullah, who is the most honorable person, O Messenger of Allah. Faqala al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam atqahum lillah. The one that has more taqwa. Quote in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna akramakum indallahi atqakum. Certainly the most honorable among you in the sight of Allah is the one that has more taqwa. So the Sahaba said, we are not asking you about this, Ya Rasulullah. He said, are you asking me about people? Then the most honorable is Yusuf alayhi salam. Nabiullah, the son of Nabiullah, the son of Nabiullah, the son of Nabiullah. He is Yusuf, the son of Yaqub, the son of Ishaq, the son of Ibrahim Khalilullah alayhi salam jami'a. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam described Yusuf alayhi salam as the most honorable. In another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described him as the generous, the son of the generous, the son of the generous, the son of the generous Ibrahim alayhi salam. Now the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, unlike the other stories of the prophets, was revealed in one surah, which is Surah Yusuf. But Yusuf alayhi salam is mentioned in two additional surahs. Surah Al-An'am in the ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions 18 of the prophets. And in Surah Ghafir, when the mu'min of Al-Fir'aun, the believer of the people of Fir'aun, was warning his people, he mentioned Yusuf alayhi salam as we will explain soon insha'Allah. So Surah Yusuf was revealed to answer two questions and to take care of a big ahwal. To answer two questions and to take care of big ahwal. The first question was, the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed from the Quran unto you. Would you please ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reveal a story? We want to hear a story. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this surah, Alif Lam Ra, Tilka Ayatul Kitab Il Mubin, Inna and Zanahu Quran and Arabi and Lalakum Takilun, Nahnu Nakusu Aleka Ahsan al Qasasi, Bima Ohaina Ileka had the Quran. We certainly, Muhammad, narrate unto you the best of the stories. So this is the first question. The second question was paused, was asked by a group of the Jewish people, Jewish community. They were talking to the Arab, the non-believers, and they said, go and ask Muhammad about what was the food that Israel, Yaqub alayhi salam, made prohibited on himself. And why did Yaqub, Israel, and his family move from Bilad al-Sham, the area of Palestine, to Egypt? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this surah to answer this question. And the food that Yaqub alayhi salam made prohibited on himself was the meat of the camels and the milk of the camels. He got so sick and this hadith was narrated by Imam Ahmad. So he said, Ya Allah, if you heal me, I will leave for you the most beloved food that I love. So he left it for the sake of Allah. Now, this is a great lesson in Ulum al-Quran, the sciences of Quran. You might find one ayah or group of ayat that answer more than one question. It is possible that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals a group of ayat attending 
three or four, sometimes five things going on simultaneously. The ahwal that Surah Yusuf took care of is that Rasulullah had extreme pressure and torture from the Qurayshis, especially after the death of Abu Talib and Khadija radiallahu ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this surah. What was the message? The message is, O oh Muhammad, remember that 10 of the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam used to say, kill Yusuf or throw him away. Likewise, 120,000 Arab used to say, kill Muhammad or throw him away. So just like Allah brought the brothers of Yusuf like stars because Yusuf السلام, saw them stars just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought the brothers of Yusuf like stars to you o, to, to Yusuf O Muhammad he will bring to you the Arab like stars they will be Khalid and Abu Sufyan and Amr ibn As and all the Sahaba that used to fight Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Yusuf alayhi salam in this surah, great surah. But Yusuf alayhi salam was mentioned also in the book of the Jews, the so-called the Old Testament. And I would like to bring to you a brief summary of the purpose of the story in the book of the Jews. Because the Quran came to correct. Now they say that when the drought came and people became so hungry and Yusuf السلام, was able to solve the problem so the poor people says the Old Testament came to Yusuf so he said okay I will give you food but you have to give me your silver your money to who to the Fir'aun to the ruler of Egypt so they gave the money according to the story in the Bible that was the first year in the second year he said I will not give you food can you imagine Nabiullah saying this I will not give you food until you give me your animals your goats and sheep and camels and all what you have so they gave that as an exchange of the food in the third year says the story he says oh now you don't have silver or animals give me your land for the treasure of the Pharaoh the Pharaoh and the story says in the fourth year people became extremely hungry with very little and small resources so they went to Yusuf السلام, and said we want food he said well the only solution you have is to sell yourselves as slaves to the Pharaoh so the purpose of the story in the Old Testament that Yusuf السلام, saw that vision and the, uh, the king saw that ru'ya, that vision, to finally enslave the people to the Pharaoh. Now, subhanAllah, we have a historical fact in the Quran, which is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every time mentions Egypt, Allah mentions Fir'aun, except in Surah Yusuf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Al-Malik, the king. So it seems like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that this story took place when the Hyksos came and defeated the pharaohs, the dynasty of the pharaohs, took over the north part of Egypt and ruled it and they were kings. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Yusuf, it was not a Fir'aun, it was a king. The story starts with the beautiful ru'ya, the beautiful vision in the dream of Yusuf alayhi salam. Ya'qub alayhi salam was waiting, as many scholars of tafsir believe. Waiting for what? Well, his name Ya'qub comes from the verb aqaba, which means the one that will have successors in terms of anbiya. So from his sulala, from his offspring, from his children, he was promised to have prophets. That's the, the name Ya'qub. So he was waiting. And as we know, the scholars say, 
many of the prophets, their nubuwa, their prophethood, used to start with seeing a dream or a vision. Just like our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha narrates, and this hadith is in Sayyid Tirmidhi, and many other scholars also narrated the same hadith, that the first thing that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam experienced from his nubuwat is the true dream, true vision, ru'ya. Aisha says, he used to see things just like he saw them in his dream. Just like a movie. Allah would show Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam things like a movie. So a ru'ya sadiqa is true for the anbiya. And that's how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was started as a sign of his nubuwat and risala. So the ulama believe that Yaqub alayhi salam was waiting. Who among his children will see a vision? So he said, you know, let me see. So it was Yusuf alayhi salam. What did he see? He saw 10 kawkab stars and the sun and the moon bowing down to him in respect. When Yusuf alayhi salam narrated the story, the dream, on his father Yaqub. Yaqub said, do not tell anyone. Yaqub knew the meaning of the dream. Who was the sun? Yaqub himself. Who was the moon? His wife, the mother of Yusuf. And who were the ten brothers? The brothers of Yusuf who tried to throw him away. And who was the eleventh? His brother from his mother. He saw 11 stars and the sun and the moon bowing down to him in respect. Yaqub knew that this boy will have something special. Not only that, this boy will be higher than Yaqub Yaqub was a Nabi. So this boy, Yusuf, will be what? A Rasul. Because a Rasul is higher than a Nabi. What is the difference between a Nabi and a Rasul? A Nabi of Allah follows the Sharia of a previous Rasul. He delivers and takes the message of a previous Rasul. So a Rasul brings a new Sharia. That's why in Surah Ghafir, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the believer among the people of the Fir'aun, Mu'min al-Fir'aun, who talked about to Yusuf. What did he say? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this man from the people of Fir'aun said, وَلَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ يُوسُفُ مِنْ قَبْلُ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ فَمَا زِلْتُمْ فِي شَكِّ And remember that Yusuf came to you. To who? To the pharaohs, to the dynasties, to the people of Egypt. So Yusuf alayhi salam was being prepared by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to that whole area. So just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered and made Ibrahim alayhi salam take his son Ismail to the land of the Kaaba for the sake of deen, likewise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let Ya'qub know that at a certain time Yusuf will take off and will stay away from you for the sake of deen, for the sake of helping the people. So obviously now Ya'qub will take a special care of Yusuf. Think about it. If somebody is living with you and you know that that person is a Nabiullah, you know nowadays scholars live with us and we respect them so much. We cherish them so much because of their knowledge and alim and deen, right? Ahlullah, the awliya, we respect them so much. Can you imagine when Yaqub is dealing first with his own son and now he sees that his son is higher than him not only Nabiullah but Rasulullah so it's obvious that Yaqub will take care of this kid 
in a special way and special manner. So what happened? The brothers of Yusuf السلام, did not like it. Remember toward the end of the surah, Allah mentions that they came from the Badu. The Badu means Al-Badiya, which is the desert. They were Bedouins. So in the custom of the Bedouins and the customs of Bani Israel, who takes preference? Who? The elder. The elder son. But now there is a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these ten brothers said, إِذْ قَالُوا لَيُوسُفُ وَأَخُوهُ They said, Yusuf and his brother are more beloved to our father than us. Then they said, إِنَّ أَبَانَا لَفِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ Man, our father is an evident and clear error. ضَلَال مُبِينٍ Clear, evident, ضلالة. Our father, obviously he has lost it. You know, think our, about our position among the people. What are they going to say? Some ulama say, try to connect things together. Huh? He is taking care of the little one and he is leaving the elders. So this means that we are bad or something. Our father has lost it. Inna abana lafi mubin. So they got together and they made ijma'ah. How should we deal with this? One of them said, Uqtulu Yusuf. Kill Yusuf. The sweetest, the kindest, the softest among the brothers of Yusuf said, No, no, no. Killing? We are the son of a Nabiullah. Throw him away. That was the kindest. That was the softest. Mm. Just throw him away. So now they said, what's the plan? I said, well, the first step is to talk to our father to take Yusuf to a journey. And then once we have him, we are going to throw him away, away, away. Far away. In a place that has a well. Because we want people to pass from there, take water and take him. So they went to Yaqub alayhi salam. Qalu ya abana malaka la ta'manna ala Yusuf. Oh our father, why don't you give us Yusuf? He is an amana, he will be an amana with us. And subhanallah in this word ta'manna, there is ishmam in the Tajweed called Ishmam. What is Ishmam? Ishmam, when you recite this word, even in Salah or from the Quran, outside of Salah, you have to bring Ishmam. What's Ishmam? Ishmam is that you bring the movement of a Dhamma, but you are pronouncing a Fatha. قَالُوا يَا أَبَانَا مَا لَكَ Watch my lips. لَا your lips will make the movement of a Dhamma, but you are pronouncing a Fatha. Why? Allah is showing us when they said that, they said something with their mouths that was not true. <laughs> said, he is an Amana. Allah said, no, no, no. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> you just move in your lips with the lie. Subhanallah. This word indicates this deep meaning. Hmm. So Yaqub wanted to be kind to his children. He said, you know, I am afraid that the wolf will come and eat him. He said, our father, we are 10 and we are strong. If the wolf comes and eats Yusuf, then we are nothing. We are zero. You know, inna idhan lakhasirun. We are the greatest losers. So under the pressure, and because he did not want to show the brothers of Yusuf that he knew something about him, Yaqub gave them Yusuf. Now Yusuf was very young. 
he was very young. Some ulama believe that Yaqub already had the information that Yusuf will be taken away. So he was trying to delay it, number one. Number two, if he would be lost in any case, Yaqub didn't want that his sons be involved. These are the brothers of Yusuf, he is a father. Can you imagine you put in that situation? You know, some of your kids are planning and plotting against the other. It's painful. So some ulama believe that Yaqub had the information, so he did not want his sons to do that. He wanted some other qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take Yusuf away. Now remember that Yaqub when he listened to the dream of Yusuf, he knew that Yusuf was not going to die. Why? Because he told him, Allah will teach you the interpretation of the dreams and you will become something and we are going to bow down to you. So he knew that Yusuf السلام, was not going to die. And from this fact, the ulama take what I just talked about. Okay, so the plan worked. Now the wolves, <laughs> the, the human will, wolves, not the animal wolf, the human wolves were alone with Yusuf when shaitan comes and that jealousy that hate toward Yusuf was interpreted to take him away and they put him in a well of water and they came back Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَجَاءُوا أَبَاهُمْ عِشَاءً they came at the time of Isha crying. Said, oh, ya abana. We went to play and we just left Yusuf by himself and the wolf came and ate him. And they are crying, you know. MashaAllah, movie. You know, human being is ajeeb. <laughs> when the human being puts something in his mind, ajeeb. Ah, human being is very smart. Extremely smart. So they are faking and designing all that, you know. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَاءُوا عَلَىٰ قَمِيصِهِ بِدَّمٍ كَذِبٍ They brought on his shirt blood that was a lie. So Yaqub alayhi salam is Nabiullah. He is an elder. He is not, you know, anyone. So he is looking at the shirt and saying, MashaAllah, this wolf has etiquettes, man. These are my words, <laughs> not the words of Yaqub salam, but I'm just explaining. Huh? <laughs> this wolf has such etiquettes. He ate Yusuf salam, without scratching the shirt or breaking it. Inshallah, this shirt is intact. Can you imagine? I was a wolf. Clearly, it is a human wolf. <laughs> ah, subhanAllah. Uh, what did he say? Your nafs made you plan something. And I seek refuge. I seek the refuge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on whatever you are describing right now. So subhanAllah, imagine the loneliness of the young Yusuf, alone, a young boy, far away from his family for the first time ever, in a well of water, in the midst of the desert. No one, maybe he was remembering the voice of his father. I'm sure he was praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making tasbih just like his father taught him. Maybe he was listening to the sound of the wind of the desert. Maybe the animals of the desert. Maybe all that. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his qadr made it so that a caravan came and they sent one ahead to check the water. وَجَاءَتْ سَيَّارَةً A caravan came. فَأَرْسَلُوا وَارِدَهُمْ So they sent one to check the water. 
فأدلى دلوه he put down laid down his bucket so Yusuf عليه السلام took advantage he was a smart boy <laughs> so he hung to the rope and he was taken out uh, what did the people say قال يا بشرى oh this is بشارة good news هذا غلام but immediately in themselves secretly said mashallah very good bargain we are going to sell in egypt sir secretly trade commerce business already they were talking about selling yusuf now i started this talk by saying that rasulullah said that yusuf was al karim ibn al karim ibn al karim ibn al karim the most honorable the son of the most honorable the son of the most honorable the son of the most honorable and now he is going to be sold with few darahim allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says thaman bakhs cheap they sold him as a very cheap bargain but if people sold Yusuf cheap, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there for him. And it doesn't matter. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will compensate. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of anyone who, anyone who has yaqeen on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. So he was sold to a household in Egypt. The man who bought Yusuf alayhi salam, he said to his wife, وَقَالَ الَّذِي اشْتَرَاهُ مِن مِصْرَ لِمْرَأَتِهِ أَكْرِمِي مَثْوَاهِ My wife, take care of this young man. He saw something deep in Yusuf. He saw something extra. This young man has special qualities. One obvious quality was his extreme beauty Allah has given him according to some narrations of hadith half of the beauty of humanity but who has the entire beauty of humanity Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if Yusuf had half Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa has it all he had it all sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the sahaba used to say when Rasulullah used to come walking at night, we would look at the full moon and at the face of Rasulullah and the face of Rasulullah will be shining bright more than the full moon. He said, This young boy, I see something special in him. He might benefit us. Or we might take him as a son. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that after this scene in the surah, Yusuf alayhi salam now is growing up in the household of Al-Aziz in Egypt. And he became what? Strong. Allah given him hukum and ilm, wisdom and knowledge. Now, the first test comes to Yusuf alayhi salam. He was with the wife of Al-Aziz at home. So she thought of the sin. But before I proceed with the ayat, the ulama list 11 reasons why Yusuf alayhi salam would have done the ma'asiyah, the sin. He had 11 good reasons. So there is no excuse. Number one, he was young. Just the ayah before the story of this incident, Allah mentions that he reached balagha ashuddahu. Balugh, strong, young, and he is, you know, ready. So he was single. Number two, he has reached puberty and he was strong. Number three, he was extremely elegant. Number four, 
he was a servant at the house of Al-Aziz. And a servant is under orders. So he was under orders. Reason six, he was away from his hometown, his country. You know some people go to another country to do the masiyah, to do the sin. They say, people know me here, let me go to another place. So Yusuf salam was already away from his country. She did not ask him for the sin implicitly, meaning indirectly. No, she said it directly. <laughs> she was beautiful. She was a prestigious lady. Remember the hadith of Rasulullah of the seven people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cover under his shade. The day that there will be no shade except the shade of Allah. One of them is a young man whom a lady that is beautiful and prestigious called him for the sin and he said, Inni akhafullah. He was with her in the house. This is not just a movie that the person saw or an incident. He was there in the house. And 11, she closed not a door, the doors. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَغَلَّقَتْ with the exaggeration form, which means that she securely and tightly closed the doors. Doors, not door. وَغَلَّقَتِ abwab, not bab, abwab, plural. Many, many doors. And she said, the sin. He answered, Ma'adha Allah. I seek refuge in Allah. Innahu Rabbi. Who? Allah is his Rabb. And also the king is his master. Because the word Rabb is used also as a master. Like we say, Rabbul Bayt and Rabbatul Bayt. Innahu Rabbi Ahsana Mathwai. Innahu la yuflihu zalimun. Those who do zulum injustice to the people who were kind to them. Those people are wrongdoers. Zalimun. That's one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ هَمَّتْ بِهِ And she had the all intention to go ahead with the sin. Now the question that everybody asks almost always, did Yusuf alayhi salam had the same ham, the same intention? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ هَمَّتْ بِهِ وَهَمَّ بِهَا لَوْلَا أَرْرَآ بُرْهَانَ رَبِّهِ Did he or didn't he? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَهَمَّ بِهَا لَوْلَا أَرْرَآ بُرْهَانَ رَبِّهِ So did he or didn't he? The answer is he did not whatsoever. He did not even think about it. What is the proof? The word لَوْلَا لَوْلَا in the Arabic language is called حَرْفُ امْتِنَاعٍ لِوُجُودٍ a word that explains that because of the presence of something, something else that is related did not take place. For example, somebody has a sword and somebody has a shield. In Arabic you can say, Laula the shield, he would have hit him with a sword. The question is, did he hit him with a sword? Let me repeat. Laula, the shield, if it was not because of the shield, that's Laula, if it was not because of, then he would have hit him with a sword. The question is, did he hit him with a sword? No, because of the shield. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, because of the burhan of his Rabb, he would have made the intention. Think about it. So because of the burhan is present, then he did not even think about that. And that's what you expect from a Nabi Kareem. Now the question is, what was the Burhan? Burhan means evidence. What was the Burhan? Some ulama say that the Burhan was the taqwa and iman and yaqeen of Yusuf alayhi salam. He had ihsan. Ihsan is that you worship Allah just like you see him. But if you cannot see him, he sees you. So Yusuf alayhi salam felt the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his heart. He had ihsan. 
So that's why that Qur'an, that evidence of Iman, forbade that he thinks about the ma'siyah, the sin. Other ulama say, wait a minute, yes, that's true, but there is something more into it. He says, remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the wife of Al-Aziz closed tightly and precisely the doors? Now when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Yusuf alayhi salam escaping, all of a sudden, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَلْفَ يَا سَيِّدَهَا لَدَى الْبَابِ الباب with al tarif the door, meaning the main door. So how did the doors open? Some Mufassirun say, that was the evidence the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the closed doors for Yusuf until he reached the most outer door. Subhanallah. Hmm. Then what happened? وَأَلْفَ يَا سَيِّدَهَا لَدَى الْبَابِ So they saw her master, Sayyidaha, standing on the door. Immediately, she has to come up with an excuse. What did she say? قَالَتْ مَا جَزَاءُ مَنْ أَرَادَ بِأَهْلِكَ سُوءًا She said, what is the justice and the punishment to someone who wanted with your family something bad? So Yusuf immediately defended himself. He did not wait. She is accusing him. He said, no. She was the one who wanted that, and I ran away. So now, there's chaos in the palace. Everybody's talking, what's going on, everybody's like, wow, wow, you know, all that. So, they are analyzing the situation, until a wise man of the family of this lady came and said, check his clothes. If he was attacking, then his shirt will be ripped off from the front. And if he was fleeing away, then his shirt will be ripped off from the back. Allah says, so when they saw that the shirt of Yusuf was ripped off from the back, they said, this is your planning, your kaid, your plot. Certainly your plot is great. There is a narration that the one who gave this testimony was an infant boy. But this narration is weak. Why? Because if a young boy, an infant, if an infant, like Isa السلام, who spoke when he was infant, would have given the testimony, then she cannot say at the end of the surah, now the truth has become clear, I was the one who did this with him. So the ulama say because of that, that hadith is weak and because of the context of the surah, it should be eliminated. That's not, you know, coherent with the story. Because at the end of the story she says, now the truth has been clarified. I was the one who uh, tempted him. Hmm? So a wise man in the family said that. So now, the ladies are talking, you know, blah, 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 blah. Oh, the wife of the Aziz, the wife of the chief master. Uh, she is doing this and this, you know, this young man has destroyed her. Her heart is in, in, in you know, finished. She is finished. She has no sense. She is crazy. She is this, she is that. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَقَالَ not وَقَالَتْ because نُسْوَ in Arabic is a feminine word then why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use the masculine word وَقَالَ نِسْوَةٌ in the Arabic language when you do that it's indicating a few number of ladies وَقَالَ نِسْوَةٌ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ إِمْرَأَةُ الْعَزِيزِ تُرَاوِدُ فَتَاهَا عَنْ نَفْسِهِ a small group of ladies in that city started talking that the wife of Al-Aziz uh, is what? 
she is trying to do things with her own servant and slave. We certainly see her as in an evident loss. Dalal Mubin. Now, the wife of Al Aziz is very smart. She is going to answer and she is going to prove to these ladies that she is stronger than them. Can you imagine? These ladies are not easy. <laughs> huh? She said, Okay, you're talking about me like this. I will prove to you, she's thinking, I will prove to you that I am much stronger than you. What did she do? She prepared, when the news got to her, she prepared a setting. Some ulama say a feast, food, and she called on them. You are invited, come on. She's thinking, I'm inviting you, but I will show you. I will show you what's going on. SubhanAllah. So they sat down. And she gave to each and every one, Allah says in the Quran, a knife. Then she said, Yusuf, come out. When he came out, these ladies were puzzled. What's this? And they cut their hands. And they started following Yusuf. What's the proof? At the end of the story, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَا بَالُكُنَّ إِذْ رَاوَتُنَّ A group of ladies, Yusuf عن نفسه. Not one, all of them now. They were gone. So what was the message of the wife of Al Aziz? She's like saying, look, I live with him in the same house and this happened once. You saw him from the first time and your brain was gone. So who's stronger? I am much stronger than you. That was the message of the wife of Al Aziz. And they tried again and again with Yusuf alayhi salam. So he is under so much pressure. He said, Ya Allah, if the only solution to this, to get away from the sin, from the ma'asiyah, is prison, Ya Allah, take me to the prison. Qala, Rabbi, as-sijnu ahabbu ilayya mimma yad'oonani ilayya. Prison is much more beloved to me than what they are calling me for. وَإِلَّا تَصْرِفْ عَنِّي كَيْدَهُنَّ And if you do not protect me from their plotting and planning, أَصْبُ إِلَيْهِنَّ I am afraid that they will, you know, overcome my strength. وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ And I will be among the jahileen, the ignorant, by doing the mistake. فَاسْتَجَابَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His Rabb, answered this dua, answered his call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Allah answered the dua of Yusuf so he protected him from the plotting and planning of the ladies then you know everybody is talking now in the city so they decided to accuse the innocent she seduced Yusuf and now they are accusing the innocent. They are strong. He is there. They are the royal family. They are the kings. She is the wife of the king. She wants to punish him with the prison and to show him that if he does not go with her plan, you know, he's going to be punished. And the king wants to come out of this story by saying, you know, Yusuf is doing something wrong, that's why we sent him to the prison. ثُمَّ بَدَى لَهُمْ And it came to them, it occurred to them, the idea, مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا رَأَوْا الْآيَاتِ Even they saw the signs that he was truthful and innocent. 
min ba'di ma ra'u al-ayat they saw the ayat they saw the signs la yasjununnahu hatta hin that they are going to prison him until they think about it you know at that time some of the ulama say they had no computers to keep you know how many days are there or how many years nah, put him in jail forget about him until we think about it huh? nowadays it might happen those who have power can send people to prison and say okay leave him there two years three years four years five years six years sometimes 15 years it happened but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there is going to judge everyone so Yusuf alayhi salam was found in the prison and this will be inshallah the first part of his story we will continue and carry from this point on inshallah next week jazakumullahu khairan wa barakallahu feekum wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh